Today, we're going to talk about DSCR loans. We're going to talk about hard money loans. We're going to talk about maybe rate and term type loans. We're going to talk about the burst strategy, how to get qualified with the DSCR lender. We've got Derek Young on from Vontiv, one of the major DSCR lenders in the country, really. And uh, they have a, a, a brand called myinvestorloan.com. I've done several deals with Derek directly, and we're actually working on some new stuff now. We're working on some rate and term type uh, loans for the birth strategy. Derek, so let's just give yourself an introduction, who you are, what you do. I already said who you work for, but what do you yeah. actually do? Yeah, so I'm Derek Young. Uh, what my kind of primary job is, is running the you know inside sales team, which is what we call it internally. But externally, when we talk to investors, we're called lending advisors. So you know, I run the team of lending advisors, and then um, I'm kind of a lending advisor myself, where we're talking to investors all over the country, we're uh, evaluating their deals that they submit to us via our online portal. We're answering incoming calls, emails, having conversations with them about their investment strategy and discussing you know, our different financing options with them, how we can help them grow and uh, leverage debt to you know, exponentially grow their portfolio without always having to use cash out of their pocket or, or raising private money. Um, so that's kind of our, our day-to-day job is really helping you know, real estate investors leverage, um, you know, financial products that are built for real estate investment strategies and then, um, you know, apply those uh, financial products to, you know, maybe acquisitions, refinances, um, you know, different things that the investor is looking at. And really what we're focused on in terms of our buy box, uh, we're focused on one to 10 unit residential investment properties. So not really commercial deals, you know, no five guys buildings, things like that, just one to 10 unit residential investment properties. If you're buying and renovating the property, we have loan products for that. If you're buying a turnkey rental, we have loan products for that. If you own uh, rental properties that you want to cash out some equity so that you can uh, acquire more rental properties, we have loan products for that. Um, and then we have some cool like bank statement loan products and different things for you know different strategies like short-term rentals or things like that. So let me give a testimony, first of all, to Derek and his team, because we recently had a hell of a deal in Lafayette. And it was a requirement, though, that to get this great deal, we had to close on it in a week. And I had a private money lender lined up, but they were out of the country. I called Derek and I was like, dude, I got a really good deal, but we've got to close on it next week, man. And it was Friday. It was a Friday at like lunch. I, I got to give a shout out to these guys. We closed on that deal the next Thursday at 4 p.m. We closed on like super amazing, almost unheard of in the lending industry to have a legit institutional lender close on a loan in literally four and a half working days. Like fantastic, dude. Like what a, what a great yeah. story. Yeah, that was really fun, James. I'm glad we, you gave us the opportunity to see if we could execute for you. And uh, I'm glad it worked out. And, and part of it too, you know, we, we have to get our ducks in a row, but then, you know, the client or the borrower, you know, you had your, your, uh, all your documents in order. You were very responsive and you made it uh, really easy on our end to, to get everything needed to get the, get it closed. So that was really helpful. And your title and insurance were, were great as well. I remember trying to do loans early in my career. Right. And I was out like literally working on flipping my, like with my own hands, you know, and, you know, I'm trying to do hard money loans and stuff. I'm laying tile, I'm on a roof doing a roof repair and I never could get these deals done. I never could get them done, but it's because I wasn't responsive. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I wasn't responsive. So I, I'm telling our you know listeners this, if you are going to get a loan with an institutional lender, like you've got to be prepared that the next 10 to, to 15 days or so, like you've got to deal with this, 
they're going to be sending you a lot of questions, information you've got to line up, lining up your insurance, all the things like you can't send in a loan application and take a trip to Jamaica. It's not going to happen. Derek can't do his job without us as a counterpart being right there as a team together. Is that right? That's exactly right. Yeah. We need you on the other side. I mean, part of our loan process is, um, you know, after we give you some loan offers and evaluate the deal, as you know, there's like tasks and borrower tasks that we need and information that we collect up front. Ideally, we can collect as much information up front as possible to, to get things going. But there is going to be things that pop up throughout the underwriting process, even if it's a four day underwriting process. And we're going to need you to be on your toes and, and get that documentation over to us, especially if you're trying to close quick. So that was, you know, you're hitting the nail on the head. Thank you so much. All right. So let's go through a couple of these products without getting too deep in the woods, but a big overview. Okay. Uh, so we give a good explanation of what these products are. So what is a DSCR loan? What is it used for? Yeah. So a DSCR loan stands for a debt service coverage ratio loan. And really what that means is the way that a lender is underwriting that deal so the, the way that they're ensuring that they're going to get paid back on the loan is they're looking at um, or we are looking at the property's cash flow. So we're looking at the rental income of the property if it's currently leased or if it's not leased what the market rents are. And then we're doing a calculation of what's that rental income and then what are your monthly expenses? So what is your principal and interest payment? What is your monthly tax payment? What is your monthly insurance payment? And does that rental income exceed those monthly expenses? And that's how we calculate kind of your max loan amount. And we're lending up to 80% of your purchase price. But we want, as a lender, want to make sure that that property is cash flowing so that you're not underwater from day one. You have a property that's that's making you money. Um, so that's where the debt service coverage ratio comes into play. And really, we like to do deals where the debt service coverage ratio is above one, which basically just means you you have more rental income than what your monthly expenses are. Yeah. So... What kind of experience does a person need to have to get approved for a DSCR loan if their deal makes sense to fit the requirements? Yeah, right now with my investor loan, we need you to either own one or two other rental properties or own your primary home. So we don't want to, uh, we're not giving loans to investors that don't own any any real estate Um right now for DSCR loans. If they're doing a fix and flip or a bridge loan, we'll do those for new, brand new investors. You don't have to own a property, but yeah. for a DSCR loan, we just want to make sure that you have a rental property and that your credit score is ideally above 660. Uh, and if not, you know, there's a lot of people that are really good investors. Maybe they don't have a good credit score. They just get a credit partner. They create an LLC together and then that credit partner becomes a sponsor of the deal. Um, so there's definitely a, a little workarounds and ways to, to get deals done, but really your credit score and then you're you know owning a property yes they're gonna have to have some experience for a dscr loan but you tapped into maybe not so much with a bridge loan or a hard money loan you could be brand new but so another thing that i want to make sure not just experience is needed for a dscr loan but also some liquidity so talk about that a little bit how, what is liquidity first and then how how is it measured yeah, that's a good that's a good point. So my investor loan is not going to be lending to 100 percent of your purchase price. We want to see the investor have some skin in the game. So we're lending, you know, 80 percent of your purchase price is the max. So you need 20 percent of the down payment, 20 um, percent of the purchase price as a down payment uh, in liquidity. And then also the way that we look at liquidity is basically cash reserves. Do you have money for the down payment? Do you have money for the closing costs? Because there's going to be some closing costs. And then do you have three to six months of interest payments lined up in your uh, in reserves so that, you know, you can make your monthly payments? Because maybe a lot of times people are buying properties that are unleased, so they're not going to start cash flowing right away. They need to get a renter in there. So we want to make sure that you have some money to make your monthly payments uh, and that you're not going to, um, you know, be underwater from uh, day one. So that's what we look for in liquidity. It's basically just cash reserves. So it's your bank account, a savings account, equity accounts. Uh, maybe you cash out a HELOC, um, things like that. Yeah, so that's like you know, on a hundred thousand dollar loan, that's gonna have a rental property. I mean, a rental value of like you know twelve hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking probably needing to be able to show 
25, 30 grand in liquid in that ball. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Your down payment might be, you know, 15 to 20 K, but we're going to want to see that you have 25 to 30, as I said, to, to make some of these monthly payments. So that means listeners, that means in a savings account, in a checking account or in something that can be turned into liquid very quickly, a credit, a line of credit doesn't apply or does it? If you cash out that line of credit, if you cash out that HELOC, we will, we will count it as cash, but not, not just uh, the not line of credit there. itself. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you have a line of credit, you've got to take the, the you got to take it out, put it in your account. Yeah. And what we're seeing a lot of investors do that have a couple properties is they're doing cash out refinances on their properties using that cash to get the liquidity that yeah. they need because they don't have it sitting there. And that's what they're using for the down payment on, on uh, their property or on their next purchase. Right. So um, as far as the DSCR market, what right now is kind of an average, uh, both length of the term of the loan and interest rate? Yeah, it's a good question. So our debt service code ratio loans or DSCR loans, they're 30 year loans. We have fixed rate options. Um, which means, you know, just kind of standard principal and interest payments over those 30 years. We also have some interest only options where maybe the first five or seven years are interest only payments. Uh, and then the rate adjusts after that. Um, in terms of, uh, there's also some prepayment penalties that might be, you know, interesting to talk about. Uh, most most 30 year loans are going to have a prepayment penalty. Yeah. We give the investor the option to have a zero year prepayment penalty or a five up to five year prepayment penalty. Yeah. The longer the prepayment penalty, the lower the rate. Yeah. Um, so there's some correlation there. Uh, and then in regard to what the rates are, our rates actually just went down yesterday. So we're seeing rates anywhere from like the high sixes to the mid eights, depending on your credit score, depending on how much leverage you take. Meaning if you're taking 80% of the purchase price, your rate's going to be a bit higher than if you're yeah. taking 60% of the purchase price. So we're, so, getting, we're yeah. getting closer to the realm of where you can burr a property. Exactly. I mean, if, if in the low sixes, you can usually burr still. So um, the burr strategy is where you're basically going to put your money into the deal, get the asset or the property uh, where it is a, I call it a functioning asset, but that's, there's probably a better name, but basically where you have the property with a tenant in it and you can show a little bit of rental his history and you can refinance the property and get your money back out of the deal. The problem with trying to do that when interest rates are above 8% is that on most typical deals, your monthly payment is going to be as much or more than the rent rate. But once you get down into the sixes, you can do some deals. You can get back. We could get back into doing the burst strategy again. And you can even do a cash out refi. How long do you have to hold the property, Derek, nowadays to do a cash out refi? If you have debt on the property uh, to do a cash out refi, we want to see that you've had it for six months. So there's another strategy where you could do a rate and term refi, which is different than a cash out. You're not getting any cash, but you're trying to get all of your basis back out of it. So so the purchase price and all the money you put into it, you're just trying to get that back out so you can go do another deal. And you're not making any money, but now you've got your money back. You could go do another deal. And now that thing is renting. That's a different uh, way to refinance. How long do you have to wait for a rate and term? We can do a rate and term refinance at 100% of your total cost basis, which is what you're describing, uh, after three months after you purchase the property. 100% of your total costs are... Is there an LTV? There is an LTV, 80%, 80% loan to value on a rate and term. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a good product. You really can still do the burst strategy as long as you're buying a good deal. Um, exactly. Or if you're set on a deal long enough where you've built up some equity. But I mean, 80% loan to value is pretty sweet. Um, so I love yeah, it. I love it. That's one of our most popular products. And yeah, we help investors acquire the property, renovate it, and then they come back to us and refinance into a long-term loan. And then they go do it again. So with and, that rate and term uh, product, what's the length of those? Or is that is that a 30-year mortgage as well? Yeah, all DSCR loans are the 30-year loans um, with some sort of prepayment penalty uh, yeah. aligned in there. And, um, you know, 
as a, my investment in our strategy is to give you many different loan offers so that you can run your numbers, crunch your numbers, and then choose maybe the offer that's best for you, whether you want to pay more points up front for a lower rate, whether you want a higher prepayment penalty for a lower rate, whatever it might be. We give you a lot of options because we know, you know, investors have their, their spreadsheets that they're doing their numbers and uh, we want to give as much information to you as possible. Man, you guys are killing it, dude. You guys are really doing a good job. Um, love it. Love it. Go Can ahead. I add one more thing? Yes. Um, even though they're 30 year loans, uh, these are business purpose mortgages. We're only doing loans for real estate investment properties. So they're not going to go against your personal debt to income ratio. And we don't report them to the credit bureaus. So you could have 10 loans out, you know, with a my investor loan, and it's not going to negatively affect your personal personal debt. Right. However, we should say you guys do pull credit. Pace in the early days would say that you didn't, it don't matter what your credit is. You can go get a DSCR loan. That's not true. We do look at your credit score and we do do a hard credit pool and that hard credit pool is good for three months. Yeah. So I could still borrow money from the last time you did my credit pool because that was like just a month ago or so. Exactly. Sweet. All right. So guys, um, that is a great way to hold your rentals or refinance, keep your money moving. 